something terrifying, something of prehistoric ages when monstrous superstitions rule the minds of men. Something that has haunted the world for millions of years rose out of that verdant labyrinth. Let me tell you how the jungle itself took the law into its own hands. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're watching PNT. I'm your host, apologizing for years of crappy green screen and glad you stuck around in spite of it. Up front this week, according to numerous online sources, one Mississippi town has went above and beyond in order to honor the remarkable encounter of two of their residents. Officials from Pascagoula, Mississippi recently erected a plaque marking the site of the famous Pascagoula abduction. On the night of October 11, 1973, friends and co-workers Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker were fishing off the end of a pier located on the west bank of the river. Relaxing after work, the two men were startled when they suddenly heard an odd whizzing or buzzing noise before witnessing a 10-foot high, 40-foot wide object with flashing blue lights descend from the sky only to hover over the water near the two men. Claiming that three strange creatures then emerged from the craft after somehow paralyzing the two men, yet allowing them to remain conscious, Hickson and Parker were then taken aboard the craft and subjected to a series of examinations before finally being released. Shaken by their experience, the two contacted local police and related their incredible tale. With word leaking out to the press of the encounter, Pascagoula was inundated by the media and the frenzy eventually drew the attention of UFO researchers, including Dr. J. Allen Hynek, a noted and highly respected astronomer that assisted the U.S. Air Force with Project Blue Book. Even the highly skeptical Hynek was struck by the conviction displayed by Hickson and Parker, and while not willing to claim an extraterrestrial source as the cause, he nevertheless stated that he believed the two men had a very real and very frightening experience. As to be expected, the story itself was a matter of controversy, despite Hickson passing a voluntary lie detector test. Yet, despite this, some researchers have claimed that the witness's testimony was influenced by inexperienced investigators asking leading questions, and even a shared waking dream state, which seems as far-fetched a possibility as an alien encounter. Despite the notoriety the abduction has brought to the area, or perhaps because of it, on June 22nd, Pascagoula City officials unveiled a new historical marker commemorating the event. Occurring on the Lighthouse Park boat launches, the dedication ceremony marked one of the few times that any government has chosen to take UFOs, and those who encounter them, seriously. For PNT's part, we salute the city officials of Pascagoula and hope that their courage might serve as an example to others, and just might represent the first cracks in the wall of government silence and denial of a phenomenon reported across the globe. From paranormal plaques to barista burials, our next story in our weekly roundup of the weird takes us to Thailand, where one cafe is offering its customers a tall latte with a double shot of... death? According to numerous sources online, the Kid Mai Death Cafe in Bangkok is getting quite a bit of attention for the unusual service it offers along with tasty beverages and that little cookie you just can't live without. Patrons to the Death Cafe can now get in touch with their cappuccino-soaked corpse by lying in restful repose within one of the provided coffins, complete with lid. The cafe owner explained the purpose behind the unusual offering, stating that our main goal is for the visitor to experience the death awareness. When the lid of the coffin closes, their basic instincts come up and they eventually realize that they can't take anything with them. 
Based on the tenets of Buddhist philosophy, the purpose behind the cafe is not to instill a fear of or to glorify death, but instead to remind visitors of the transitory nature of our existence. The cafe has proven to be popular, with customers posting accounts of their experiences, often expressing gratitude to the owners for their new perspective on life. For PNT's part, we've always felt that death is a door that opens, not closes, but we have to admit that we're still uncertain as to whether or not we'll choose mocha or hazelnut before heading to the great cash register in the sky. We'll be back with the final part of our program in just a few moments. But first, a word from our sponsor. Well, no wonder my laundry bill is so high. All those napkins last week. Dove skin. What? You should use dove skin dinner napkins. Paper napkins? Oh, no. I don't mean thin little paper napkins, but dove skin dinner napkins. You'll love them. Everybody loves dove skin dinner napkins. These soft, linen-like napkins are two-ply in smart, formal fold, in white and in beautiful pastel colors. And those skin dinner napkins are big. They cover your whole lap, and they stay put. What's more, they last throughout the meal, and they leave no lint. But they are nice. And they would save my linen. They save you money, too. Those skin dinner napkins cost only 49 cents for five dozen. That's a fraction of a penny apiece. All right, Daddy. You'll find those skin dinner napkins, those skin facial tissues, and other those skin products at your favorite grocery, supermarket, department store, or drugstore. Look for the brown dispenser box. Those skin. Welcome back. And remember, for your next dinner party, that nobody does napkins like dough skin. For the final part of our weekly roundup of the weird, PNT is pleased to bring you an unusual UFO sighting drawn from the MUFON database. Filmed on June 2nd, the footage appears to show a saucer-shaped craft flipping like a coin in the skies over Cave Creek, Arizona. Let's have a look at the footage. Seriously.
So what was the saucer-shaped object filmed flipping end over end in the skies over Cave Creek, Arizona earlier this month? Let's run down the possibilities. Anyone with a rational thought rattling around in their brain can see that this obviously is not a bird, cloud, flare, meteor, civilian, or commercial aircraft. So, you might ask yourself, why do we continuously run down the same possibilities each and every week? Because these are the explanations for fully 90% of the footage that PNT finds submitted to MUFON and uploaded here to YouTube. PNT could easily showcase an endless stream of relatively worthless and easily explainable videos simply to garner views. But we prefer to be far more selective and present to our viewers only the most credible and compelling cases. Quality over quantity. So that aside aside, that would bring us to balloons. Balloons, as we have frequently seen, are always a possibility as are drones, but let's take them one at a time. Balloons, in this case, could very well be a possibility. With the scale of an object being extremely difficult to determine without a foreground object in the frame for size reference, a smaller object that is closer to the witness will appear to be much larger than it actually is. Conversely, a large object at an extreme distance will appear much smaller than its actual size. This would mean that this could be nothing more than a loose party balloon caught in a wind eddy, which might account for the flipping motion that the object exhibits. However, there are several points that call this into doubt. If this were a balloon caught in an eddy, it would logically move in a circular pattern around the periphery of the air current, moving with the flow. The object in the film does not exhibit this rotating motion, rather moving horizontally across the frame to the left. Under magnification, we can see the details of the flipping motion, the craft turning end for end around a central axis. With the footage slowed down to half speed, we can see that the object appears to stop the rotation and then abruptly reverse the direction of the spin. Were this a balloon caught in a circular air current, it would flip in a random manner at the mercy of the prevailing currents and the variables of its own weight and aerodynamics. The object here does not seem to flip about randomly, and while this cannot be completely ruled out, it does appear that there might be a force controlling the motion. If it's not random, it would follow that something, or someone, is in control. Which leads us to drones. Could what we are seeing here be nothing more than a drone at play? Drones are capable of a variety of sudden aerial maneuvers, and loops and flips are possible. Possible, but not desirable or easy. The process is more art than science and requires an intimate knowledge of the workings of a drone, and one that is capable of withstanding the stresses of tight motions at high speeds. It also cannot be done with just any drone. Only higher-end racing drones or pricey custom-built drones are capable of these tricks. With the expense, required expertise, and last, the sheer danger of putting a flying buzzsaw through high-speed maneuvers that might break it apart and send it crashing into someone's head, we can see that this is not a terribly likely possibility. Just the presence of children in the recording would present a terrible danger that no one in their right mind or a responsible flyer would ever take. The final nail in the drone coffin is the small detail that drones cannot sustain prolonged spins or extremely tight loops without rapidly losing the ability to maintain effective, stable flight. So, with balloons and drones disposed of, that would bring us to the possibility that this could be some sort of test craft, possibly of a military nature. With government contractors such as the Boeing Corporation in nearby Mesa developing and testing new hardware for the military in the Arizona desert, could this perhaps be an errant prototype that drifted off course and over a residential area? Unfortunately, there's no way to be certain. 
as the United States military is typically and understandably reluctant to reveal details of classified projects to the public at large, we can only speculate as to the design and purpose behind such a craft. A mobile surveillance platform? Is that not the exact purpose behind a drone? Why would the military reinvent the wheel? The questions just make this explanation all the more curious. So, with the common causes accounted for or deemed unlikely, that leaves us free to pursue the boundless possibilities presented by the unknown. Is it possible that what was captured on film over one Arizona city was not of terrestrial origin, but of extraterrestrial or perhaps even interdimensional nature? Leaving E.T. alone for a moment, what if what we are seeing here is perhaps not a craft at all, but a portal to another dimension entirely, or perhaps even another time? Could what we perceive as a disk flipping end for end in fact be the moving event horizon of a passage to another reality? Could this be a natural phenomena endemic to our planet, but undiscovered and unknown to Western science? Or could it be caused by artificial means, perhaps by the residents of another reality entirely, where the technology exists to peer across the veil that separates our worlds? What if, instead of extraterrestrials, these sightings are in fact our descendants, peering back or perhaps even forward in time to learn more about their ancestors or even their forebears. With the ability to manipulate time and space at will, what would this race of others do with this technology? To what purpose would it be put to? And perhaps the more pertinent question, what would we do in their place? Unsettling points to ponder as we look up to the skies and perhaps our destinies. But whether or not the object filmed flipping like a flapjack over the Arizona desert earlier this month was a runaway balloon caught in an air current, an advanced military prototype scoping out saguaros, or something else entirely, we'll leave up to you to decide. Sound off in the comments section below with your thoughts. That's it for this time, faithful viewers. Be sure to click like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified when PNT presents your next portion of the paranormal. I'm your host, reminding you to keep an open mind. Because a closed one shuts out the truth. Never. Stop! Why don't you shoot? You can't miss. But you won't make me go back. You and I don't belong together anymore. Goodbye, Dina. <laughs>